Yo, 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 welcome everybody. Good evening everyone, welcome back to TCR Trinity. Competitive racing. Well, TCR TJ is the Season 13 Golden Class Champion for Trinity Competitive Racing. Oh, let's go, dude! Yes! Jabbar on the podium! He's on it by a tenth! Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, not... side by side through one. And side, oh, and see freeze gets a little half spin. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Wheel bumping. DRS Naval, let's do it. And Captain Blade battling it out for position. Captain Blade. Echo, what the f? The McChicken goes around and he also makes a yeah, rewind down the front straight. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta check the heart rate. Why do we do this? Because of nights like this. be a good discussion yeah yeah so I was thinking I was thinking a lot well I always like think about that sort of stuff but when you when you told me the other day <clears throat> I really wanted to like um, talk to you about it because it's such like I feel like people like nowadays they're just so like zoned in and they're kind of on like autopilot almost where they just are stuck in a loop and are just continuing doing what they do and no one's realizing no one realizes like the negatives of the things that they actually do, if that makes sense. I yeah, feel like... I mean, I just, yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't think of it as an issue necessarily. Like, especially with like, because we were talking about, you know, stuff like Instagram and, and TikTok, how it's so easy to just scroll through nothing for hours. It, I really think it's an addiction. Oh, Like absolutely. a legitimate addiction, but it's not seen in the same light as like a drug or alcohol addiction, so people aren't thinking anything of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, um... Well, I mean, TikTok is... Do you, do you have TikTok? No. Okay. I used to. I used okay. to have it, but I got rid of it. And okay, I'm, good. I, I don't regret that at all good 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 that's a that's like the number one thing because like it it depends like if someone has tiktok and and they're using it a very small amounts a day or, or very very limited and let's say it's something because like i know you could like follow certain like hashtags or certain like things you're interested in and if that's the case you know that could be fine you know uh for a little bit but then people just keep going and going and going and then they get so far down the 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 scrolling they're on a topic and thing that is like not even related or they're not really even interested in it and they're just keep on scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and they're just watching like things to just watch things but it doesn't it, it's just making their brain go to mush more or less mm -hmm. but yeah tiktok i never had tiktok um thank god well we actually <laughs> we have the uh, uh we do have a tcr account I what? haven't gone on there at Ye all. Yeah, well, we never really posted anything, and I don't even think we really need to, because you know what? I feel like nowadays, I know it's still really, really popular, but I feel like more people are are realizing it's not good for them. Not enough people, but 
like for like like you for an example you did have it realized it was really bad and then got rid of it and you mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I know I, I know a lot of people here. like that too they've gotten it realized it was bad and then they they deleted it and they haven't gone back and probably never will because uh, every platform has the same style now but not everyone will delete it the mass majority of people who go on it are just glued to it yeah well I mean you just said a good point on how like ever since TikTok came around like everything else has become TikTok like you mentioned the YouTube shorts the other day like it's hard to go on YouTube and not feel like you're on TikTok mm. because the first thing that you see when you open the YouTube app you go to the home and you see the shorts you see usually a couple of recommended actual videos but you see the shorts right there as well so it's hard to avoid that yeah and I looked to see if there was a way to disable um, the shorts on YouTube because I it's just so easy when because I've always used YouTube but what I liked about it was that you never really had those videos the shorts and all that nonsense so then when they added it it was like okay it was still kinda hard to get to but now they have their own little button on the bottom shorts you know when you go to anybody's page you can look at their videos and you can look at their shorts um, and they keep recommending things and it's like I just would rather disable it I really wish that becomes a feature maybe there's like a way but I haven't found it I was looking a little bit I think last night or, or the day before but I didn't find anything I don't think you can I don't think mm. YouTube wants you to be able to do that because it's working so well for them like you notice because the the shorts that we've been posting not just on YouTube but on Instagram there was one on Instagram that's gotten 11,000 views one of the shorts I posted on there, 11,000 views. Like, we should have been doing this the whole time, like the past oh, couple of years or whatever. And even with YouTube, like, the the views have been inconsistent with the shorts. But, like, one of them, I'm looking right now, um, one of them got 3,000 views. Yeah. There's been a bunch that's gotten over 1,000. And there was one of the, one of the shorts had a hundred likes which is actually pretty good as well to get uh, that on the on the shorts but yeah no the shorts and the, and the Instagram stuff I don't really see the Instagram stuff because I don't am not on it but um yeah no they're they're really good and uh, yeah you did a good job putting them all up there too I think we'll continue uh continue with it throughout the season mm -hmm. the new season and we definitely yeah. can keep going with that which in, yeah. in, in that case that's actually good that we, there is sh YouTube shorts and that there is um, the Instagram reels or whatever you call them because it does help you know a lot of like communities or businesses companies pro you know that they have their products or whatever they're trying to sell and it it gets eyes on them but uh yeah it's not going away like no. there's, i don't see a trend to where like people are like watching less of it because you said like how there's been a lot of people that see tiktok as like a bad thing to where they're deleting it but as I said before, you know, all of these other apps are becoming like TikTok. And if, you know, you have these communities and businesses that are benefiting from the shorts because they're getting a ton of views, then it's not going away. And I think, you know what I think we should do, C3? Like, yep. during the season, so we have the Silver Race, Golden Race, Platinum Race, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think that Friday, we should post shorts throughout the week throughout the weekend the races of that week so like oh. we post a short from the silver golden and platinum class race that way we're not doing this in in the off season it i mean we could post some in the off season but like 
we're not even like a third of the way through past this past season with the shorts. Like I've only gotten through Baku. Yeah. <laughs> I know we've done some from like Saudi Arabia, but like I'm trying to do one from every single race. We're not even a third of the way through. So I just, I don't know if we're going to get that done in time by the new season, you know, get all the shorts from last season done. So I think we should just do that throughout this next season to where we're, we're kind of doing recaps of the week on like a, a Friday. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Because I think um, like during now, the off season, we're just trying to like start, keep things active throughout the off season, which has been nice because we had the shorts. We still are doing the podcast, and then we're doing the uh, those old throwback races, which are pretty good. Um, just to at least get them up there, and this way, after this season, we'll have almost you know we'll have them all up there. But uh, then, then we got some events coming up. We got preseason coming up. We'll stream some of those, and then the the, the season starts. We'll do the shorts, everything, and mm-hmm. it'll uh, YouTube likes that. <laughs> yeah. YouTube are, loves consistency. What? So, are we doing throwback races from like certain seasons? Because like, what's the oldest season that we have? on the youtube is it season 10 season 9 that's like that was on the youtube like the latest season that we've had on the on the youtube like when because we're posting these old videos of like season 3 and season 4 because they (coughs) weren't on the youtube i'm saying like at what season did we start like actually broadcasting yeah in real time season season 5 oh okay so we're almost done yeah, yeah. The the re- by the end of January we'll have all of season four up. I think there was only one race that wasn't streamed. Season three there was a lot less races that were streamed. Season one and two we had zero. We had nothing broadcasted. Um, and I think since we started streaming in season five, I don't think we missed a race. Now there have been some times we had some dodgy cops. <laughs> like there was some times we had some recently. No, no, no. We've we there was some times we were like, damn, we really don't have a com a commentator. We got to throw somebody up in the booth, and it like it wasn't the most professional broadcast, but you know, it, at least we were able to capture. A little bit of of uh, the races then, but yeah, no, yeah. So we'll have everything up, and um, honestly, there was a lot of footage from season one and two from a lot of different drivers still on YouTube. That honestly, if you really wanted to see everything happen, you would. It would just be from the point of view from the driver. Um, so uh, I don't know if that would be something maybe cool one day to maybe try to piece some races together and do like a point of view stream throwback idea possibly hmm. not that I a lot of people are wanting to see it but just to kind of have it you know up there you know yeah you know what I think we need to do in the future we need to do more of that um driver commentator yeah to where when you were in the booth and you won on track at Abu Dhabi and you were commentating with me like that seems it seems cool like not not every week but just every once in a while that way you know you spice it up a little bit you know you got to keep things interesting it's just like the races themselves like we got to add in you know a couple sprint races a couple of like our <coughs> compound stuff for it's going to get boring. People are going to not show up late in the season. And I think the entry fee has helped with that. But like platinum, like the platinum class kind of fell off towards the end of the season. So there's, there's just more stuff we could do late in the season, you know, to keep people interested. Yeah. Well, I think, um, there were, Platinum actually, the attendance in 
I want to say season 13 was actually really, really good. I think we had like full grids, 20 drivers. I think, I don't know, it was like six or seven races in a row. The first six, seven races, full grids. And I think that was like kind of the first time that really happened uh, to start the season and just continue with 20 drivers for that long. Uh, so season 13 was good, 14, it was alright, but, uh, I think the biggest thing is just the motivation for some of those drivers. They like to win and be competitive, and when they're not all in 100%, they tend to, uh, you know, leave out, and, uh, it could be the factor, you know, some drivers like that. And it's also harder to fill the grid, too, because it's top level. So if you find, it's not every day you find platinum level drivers wanting to race, right? So hopefully more and more with the YouTube shorts and everything coming together, you know, it becomes more of a, uh, you know, more and more people want to join. But... Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what we could do next season. I would love a season to where we we start. It'll never happen, never happen. Um, you would start the season with twenty drivers, and you end the same season with the same twenty drivers. No, I don't care what we do. I just <laughs> I think that's almost impossible. Like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just. I mean, Although maybe, not you know, not really like if you look at silver or gold in last season, you're really only missing like two three drivers and like honestly it could have made it could have happened. Yeah. So. I, I think it's going to be a little tougher this season though, just because we do have that extra race, and we do <clears> have in total, it's going to be seventeen weeks, right? If you include the two off weeks with one of them being the all-star race. So like the season itself yeah. is going to be a few weeks longer than last season. Cause I don't think we only had one off week, right? Throughout the whole year. Unless if the, no, we had two because of the all-star two. Yeah. All-star week was kind of a, yeah. Yeah. But it's still going to be longer regardless. So I, I, I don't know. I, I would, I would not bet money on like, Oh, you know, we're going to keep all, all the drivers from the start of the season to the end of the season. I would put money on the fact that we won't see that happen. Like <laughs> yeah. for any of any of the classes. Nope, I agree. Yeah. So, uh on to where what else were we talking about the other day? We were talking about, like, there were these videos that... Oh, I wanted to... Yeah. I wanted to... No, because we were talking and... Um... You were saying that... So I'm just making something for a nice little graphic here. Mm -hmm. In the meantime. Um... <clears throat> No, you were saying that you, you know, you, you felt like you needed to, uh, um, I guess, I don't know, you tell me, you were saying something. Well, you, you said, I remember we said that you had these videos, these videos on how to well, don't say like, it like that. control, <laughs> well, no, like how to control, <laughs> like, your, What? I was gonna say, don't say it like that. I mean, that that infers something else. But but go ahead, uh, uh, <laughs> which is not just, the case. Not the case. <laughs> no. Um, no. No. Just like on like being routine and like getting yeah. rid of distractions. Like you know what I'm talking about. Like mm -hmm, yeah. you mentioned that towards like after the podcast. Like. Yeah. No, I got something for you. I want you to watch it now and right now okay oh absolutely i gotta cool. find it i've been listening to this for 
Actually, I just recently found it. And uh, it's just like a regular motivational speech. Motivational, they call it, uh, they call it something. They call it something. It's, it's, um, oh, they call it something. What do they call it, Camden? They call it like a... You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> they call it something here. Let me see. Motivational uh, video. It's... It's not just a motivational video, but they, um, uh, what's it called? Um, affirmation. Like, affirm, you know what that is? Big word. Big word, yeah. Affirmation. affirmation. You know what it is? Mm-hmm. Affirmation it says that the action or process of affirming something or being affirmed or emotional. Wow, story. that's very descriptive. Yeah, now that one's a terrible affirmation. Uh, the action of uh, <laughs> affirming something <laughs> or being affirmed. Really? Literally, just really? the other past tenses. The other tenses. No, it's so it's emotional support or encouragement. So I found this probably this year, just recently, and I've been using it recently. Um, in the new year, you know, I love when people start the new year and they're like, oh, new year, new me, yeah, well, that's bullshit. They come up with their New Year's resolutions, they're failed by, by day four, and they're done. Unlike me, and, and I don't, you don't have to go out there, some people will, will do these, um, New Year's resolutions and they'll announce it to the world this is what i'm doing and they every person that does it like that fails because they're mm -hmm. all talk no action if you really want to accomplish it you do you do the actual a goal and then show everybody what you did you don't tell everybody what you're going to do you show everybody what you did that's the difference between people who succeed in the um, New Year's resolution and people who don't and I for one actually do accomplish like I accomplished everything I wanted to last year it was a great really? year yeah every everything. resol wow. every everything wow. I didn't have I didn't have many because I it was very focused on what I wanted to there's one thing I still need to improve personally on but um, I've been actually doing better on that um, but <clears throat> yeah and I don't call them resolutions I call them goals you know they're they're my goals and I actually just the other day because um, I was I had COVID and everything over the the um, the Christmas break or whatever, so it wasn't really like the best oh, break. Did? Yeah, that's why I got this. <laughs> so I got this cough still going. <laughs> um, COVID. Yeah, just the cough really. Like my my right rib or muscle or whatever. Like it. Jesus, it's dude. like with, with hurts that and like your heart heart stuff that was going on. Like, oh man, I'm full. Worried apart. about you. Oh man, <laughs> falling apart. Well, anywho. I didn't have my goals written down this year yet until I would say a couple days into the new year but I actually really did take some time I sat down thought about it and I wrote out you know a, a, a decent size like not just one or two like a, a fairly big decent size and I just wrote a bunch of shit down and you know I intend on actually doing that. I don't know. I feel like uh, I'm more motivated to do it. Once you write it down, you know, that's it. It's game over. That's the mission. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, like, what's the difference between, like, one day, right? Because, like, December 31st and January 1st. But I think... The biggest thing is the motivation that a lot of people receive when it's a new year. 
And I think that's why so many people start something in the new year, but they fail to complete it because the motivation wears out. For me, I've no, I just keep going, you know, it's all in the mindset, right? So a lot of people, like if anyone goes, if you go to the gym, this is the busiest time in the gym. Maybe next week it'll die down. Everybody who just signed up with the with all these promos that all these gym companies have, um, all the new people who've never gone to the gym have gone, and but within under under three weeks they all will uh, stop coming to the gym, and then you will never see them again. Which to actually put a habit into place, you need like. I'm pretty sure 21 days, but honestly, a, a, a strong month it takes for like a habit to start becoming natural. But it takes more of 90 days, about three months, you know, a uh, quarter of the year for that habit to become your lifestyle. So, if someone could do something that they wanted to do, at the beginning of the year for just 90 days it would become a part of your life and in your lifestyle if you really mattered and cared for it but most people fail within 21 days by 21 it's just i guess the the number that um at least i know of just from research and stuff i think it's either but it's somewhere between 21 and i think 28 but it's like three to four weeks it takes for it to become habit um for anything like if you want to i don't know um like read a like if you want to let's say read x amount of pages in a book a day the f first three four weeks will be the toughest after that it'll actually become easier and then by 90 days you're like oh it's just what you do right like mm -hmm. for me like everybody i hope brush you know they brush their teeth they take a shower god forbid i hope you do uh, <laughs> <laughs> some people don't so you are right and and i hope they uh can can get to it um you know, you, you sleep, you, you eat, you drink, all these things. Why? Because you need to to survive. But then there's like a whole bunch of other things. Like for me, like the gym, like there's not even a question. It's like, you know, some people say, oh, you know, why do you go to the gym or whatever? Why do you, you know, why, why? And it's like, well, why do you brush your teeth every day? Why do you go to sleep at night? It's just a part of your every day right it's like yeah that's it's, you're investing in yourself that's my biggest thing is like you know you brushing your teeth sleeping eating all these things and going to the gym and other things that you might be interested in are all that time you're investing in yourself for you for your better future and a lot of people will come up with these resolutions and then by like I said right around now maybe within the next few days they don't even remember what the resolution was they they're, <laughs> they they're they're not that they're not wired like that they're just they they follow everybody around and would because rather they even train themselves yeah. to be like that you know I think that's actually a great way of like when you're going to the gym like you said to think survival, it almost forces you to do it. Because it's so easy to not do something like going to the gym because like, although you don't necessarily need to go to the gym to survive in the short term, the way that you need to brush your teeth, take a shower and eat, if you just put that in your mentality of like, okay, I need to work out or long term it's going to hurt me, you know? If you just think survival, then you almost, you're training your mind to just go and do it. You know, it's almost like somebody who wants to start their own business. 
you know, the, the hardest part is just starting it out, you know, but if you view it as like, oh, this is how I'm going to make a living. This is how I'm going to keep a roof over my head. Then if you think survival, it, it gives you motivation, you know, that's, and also like the thing with the resolutions, I actually didn't have one this mm. year. I haven't had one for a while. I just don't, I just haven't done it. But I, I think too, like you say a lot of people go and tell their new year's <clears throat> resolutions and they don't end up working out. I feel like the people who tell their new year's resolutions, it's almost like, it's almost like they're thinking they succeeded because if they're telling people, you know, Oh, I am going to go and do this. It shows that they really just want other people's approval and they don't really have like that self-discipline to focus on their own goals, you know, because if they're telling it, if they're telling something to other people to get attention, then they did it like that. Their New Year's resolution is done because they got what they wanted, basically, you know, to like assure to other people, hey, I'm doing this. You know, I'm doing this New Year's resolution, but it just takes away the motivation. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you tell it to other people, it's almost like you're telling yourself, like, that oh, you I did it already. But you I'm didn't. getting, I, I am getting approval by other people. You know? Yeah. Like, people are going to be, you know, saying, oh, good for you, good for you. Like, a resolution is supposed to be something that you, it's more of, it's not necessarily a short term goal because. It's not something that should be obtainable uh, within a few days, right? I mean, a lot of my goals are, okay, I really do need a couple months, maybe a f actually a full year to complete it or make progress on, right? I mean, it doesn't need to be a full completion because some, some goals could take multiple years, but it's those baby steps that improve you, you know, you for it. And mm -hmm. um, the misconception, like you were, you were saying that, you know, some people want, were motivated to, you know, start their own business or, 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 or uh, you know, other things that they might be interested in, maybe different hobbies or whatever. And a, a lot of people feel like that stuff happens overnight, which is so not the case but I think social media and this there's a misconception of people just blowing up out of nowhere but you know being uh, getting all these followers on whatever platform they're on posting all that content and they blow up and they think that it happens overnight but the reality is that person's been at it for X amount of years X amount of hours with zero success, very marginal, if that, and it just so happened to to uh, to start to, you know, get get some traction. I think the biggest thing which I've started working on is personally, I have a lot of different interests, and I found that I had so many that I had to put some on the back burner. And I mean some, I mean a lot, and a lot on the back burner for many, many years. Like there's some things I want to do, but and and get interested in, but it's just physically I don't have enough time to focus and put all my energy towards it this time in my life. So I'm thinking in another 10, 15, 20 years, that's something I would want to go and learn about. Like it's another disciplined. Um, you know, we're all sim racers, so like, if you think of, you know, F1, even in real life too, you see some drivers, um, not that it was a huge success, but Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> he went from NASCAR, huge success, and then he went to IndyCar for two years, and he failed. He didn't succeed, he failed. And that's actually good for him. Like, at his age... And, you know, his level of success in one discipline, do you really think the possibility of him going to IndyCar and then actually performing and, and winning championships, and, yeah, I mean, that's far-fetched. That's far. He no. went to IMSA, 
and but he's very but he's not even just interested in that he's he has he that jamie johnson is a very competitive person but he's also someone who is interested in a lot of different things he is also he, he's very into um, running he's run some marathons with matt kenseth <laughs> and he's done that like literally a couple days before like a nascar race or right after and he he's very into all those things but it's just taking that and going to a different discipline but you know it he couldn't do that indie car series for how many years because he was focused on his other discipline which was nascar so sometimes you do have to take things and put it on the back burner for a little while and also try to find something that you are or aren't interested in because through trial and error to really f zone in on what is important for you as an individual what's important for you what do you value i think that people should take maybe five i would say five different like hobbies or interests or could be you know business related to um like a startup or whatever take five things that you're interested in and every day you take two to three of those five and you work towards improving that and that has helped me the most in the last i would i want to say the last year or so I, i've taken a lot of my interests, a lot of my things I've taken, I have about five or so strong interests. And every day I'll work towards a few of them. Not everyone, because that's re unrealistic. Because it's just, you don't only have so many hours in the day. But mm -hmm. just improving that a little bit each day, each day, each day. A little bit of time it could be a, a it could be 20 minutes half hour hour probably not much more than that because um, then it really takes away from other things but every day you work a little bit a little bit a little bit and then over time you have all these uh, like abilities that you've kind of honed in on and kind of sharpened up so that you can use it in the future and for people who don't have any hobbies, interests, you know, skills, um, mm. and they're not working towards anything at all, and you know, your future self won't have that many abilities to really work on, especially like from a marriage point. You know, there's so much time. Like some people think they have to, you know come up with a like a startup side business and and be successful by 24 no it's like no like you can no. be you could fail by 35 40 you could be 45 years old and you you're still fine you got plenty of time at 45 50 yeah. even like like <laughs> you got plenty of time to 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 create something or perfect something that somebody's been wanting to do or maybe they haven't found it until many, many years down the line. And sometimes it does take people uh, some time to find out what they want to do. You know, a lot of, like, athletes and stuff, they'll say, Oh, when I was five years old, I wanted to be... Come on! I didn't right. know... I didn't even know, like, what happened when I was five years old. How are you going to tell me... Oh, at five years old, I wanted to be a NASCAR driver. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of um, business people uh, who became very rich. Um, Jack Ma is one that comes to mind because, like, when he was younger, he was at a point in his life to where he was getting rejected from every KFC just to work as an employee at a KFC, right? That's a pretty low point to be at. And now he's worth $34 billion and he's got his own private equity firm. Like, you know, it's never too late to make mm -hmm. things happen. I just think, and this is coming from just a personal perspective too, 
I think it's hard for people to really like categorize their interests because it's really easy to get like you know overwhelmed with like work or school and like because you put in so much time for that to where you don't know how to put in time for other interests too you know like if you just take your entire day there's 24 hours in a day right and you take eight hours and you leave that for sleep if you have a job you keep eight hours for that so you're only down to eight hours left in the day right yeah. but you can still manage those eight hours and try and figure out a way like if you are like learning a skill you just have to become routine enough to where you block in a certain time every day it's like what you were saying before you know if you do something for 90 days straight you're gonna it's just gonna become part of who you are and you'll just naturally do it i just think the problem for people is that they just don't find a specific time or they don't find a way to do something yeah. every day that they they're trying to learn how to do yeah no they're they're either lazy or they're um they're comfortable in their situation and they don't actually <laughs> want change and that no that's honest because yeah if you are comfortable in your situation, there's no reason to change your situation. For people who are comfortable, not much change happens. So you ha kind of have to seek a discomfort. Um, and I think that's just that's the biggest problem, though. I think like being comfortable and being lazy is almost the same thing. To where like, <laughs> I actually I heard this somewhere that like comfort is as like bad of a drug as like cocaine you know because once you get comfortable it's easy to become lazy because you just can't get out of it yeah well you know what i was i actually read or i don't know where i read it or listened to it or watched something it was saying um <clears throat> your your physical and mental kind of work in opposites so physically you would want to um i guess maybe um i guess take an example of well really doing anything but i'm going to i'm going to relate it back to let's say um going to the gym or working out physically you would want to keep doing things to to improve physically but it's your mental side that actually wants to kind of do the opposite because your body is trained it's just wired into us as humans to kind of um take care of ourselves so your mental side of it is really trying to have you relax and it's doing the opposite of what you physically want to do which is kind of true because if you you know if you ever uh you know lift weights or, or run or do something or even it could be you know writing or reading or so, something else it doesn't just need to be physically but uh, when you're actually doing something your brain when it when it becomes to get hard your brain will try to like tell you to stop and <laughs> it it's telling you to stop because it wants you to survive <laughs> like if if you kept um running for miles and miles and miles you know you're going to reach a mile to where you physically you know you're not going to be able to run much more and your mental side is going to tell you hey I should probably stop running because you know why I might overheat I uh, will tire out um, you know I need to, to refuel but in reality you could go a lot further than what your mental side is saying so your mental and physical they kind of work in opposites where um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see, but yeah, I don't know. I think yeah.
people people need to figure out what they what they want to do and yeah I think along with them being lazy and being comfortable like you were saying I think there's also a lot of distractions mm -hmm. oh especially nowadays oh my yes. god it's, it's right in front of us I mean like the phone is so like accessible to where like it's it's almost a challenge to not have any sort of distractions not even that but like just with how stimulated we are mm -hmm. like I just feel like it's just so difficult for most people yeah I think that <clears throat> with all social media um, events going on and I think the biggest thing is your acquaintance or friends or family circle whatever you want to whatever you want to call it <laughs> relationships mm -hmm. um i think I'll, it's very easy to keep not for me uh, personally i'm <laughs> i can it's easy for me to say no <laughs> right like oh uh, no, I'm not going nowhere tonight, and I'm just like I'm have one one uh, like I'm going right to bed or whatever it is. Good for you. Good for you. And <clears throat> I think you know a lot of people keep saying yes. They'll keep going out or hanging out with friends, and uh, it's it's the people they surround themselves with aren't the people that have that same goal or vision and what they want to be doing. So it, it kind of is. An unproductive situation when you have something you wrote down at the beginning of the year or you know want to accomplish in your life or want to do something and then you have you know people around you uh, you know bringing you down or not really sharing the same goal right they they just maybe want to party and all right you keep partying by mm -hmm. you know you know by age 50 you know partying doesn't get too fun you might um, not be around at age 50 if you're partying all the time yeah like partying <laughs> at age 50 like no one <laughs> no one's going out to the club at age 50 like yeah there's only so much time but they feel like this is what they love to do right so a lot of these people who keep partying going out okay cool at some point it's not going to be fun anymore and then you're going to realize damn what was i doing for 20 30 years you know ever since mm. like high school middle school all of my 20s college all of my 20s maybe early 30s maybe they were at a, a, a job or whatever what were you doing for all those years just mm -hmm. kind of enjoying it wasting it but you were never really self improving yourself you were just kind of going with the flow and you know never really took some time for yourself to improve yourself like it's only person that can improve yourself is yourself right so you know take some time you know physically mentally skills abilities <laughs> You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but, you know, you have to select a few things that are important to you, what you value, and then chip away, go to work, and mm -hmm. and work on it. Because, like I said, by age, like, you get up there, at some point, that partying, that Oof. going out, it's not going to be fun anymore. And then you're going to realize, damn, that was a lot of fun, but you know what, I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, I mean, that has to be a very awful feeling. If you get to that point in your life to where you're 50 and 60, and you finally have that morning you wake up, and you're like, man, I fucked up for all these years. Like, you know, I'm glad I'm not <coughs> at that point or in a situation to where, you know, that's occurring for a lot of people that happens when they get to that age and they realize like man I had goals for myself three decades ago and I still have those goals unfinished because I just couldn't not even started <laughs> right yeah, well exactly yeah, yeah. ponder the idea yeah 
And those are the same people, probably, could be, that are writing down their resolutions at the beginning of the year. <laughs> same people. Well, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And they've been doing that for all these years, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, because I go back on saying how, like, oh, you announce to the world of, like, this is my New Year's resolution. Well, I mean, if you don't accomplish it, then no one's going to even remember that you told them about your New Year's resolution. So you're going and you're announcing it to the world just for that announcement to mean nothing by the end of the year. Uh, if you go and you actually, like you said, put down goals for yourself for an entire year and you accomplish them, well, you get to the end of the year and people will see those goals that you've accomplished and you won't have to go and announce it because the goals speak for themselves. You know, all the things that you've accomplished, they they speak for themselves. But if you're going in and announcing the New Year's resolutions and you don't actually <coughs> fulfill those statements, then everyone's going to forget you even said it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. I was going to say one more thing. Oh, and a lot of the people will also... A lot of, a lot of generalizing tonight. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, I mean, it is... I, it, there's a, a big... A lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of people in those situations. A lot of people will... You know, when you're saying all these distractions, all these, you know, the, the, the people you surround yourself with, all distractions from you know your your own main goal of whatever that is but all of this extra like you know we were saying the the shorts the people you surround yourself with all you know tv shows all this other stuff that people are just addicted to and they're just so into it and that's all you know they do and just they're so one-track minded when it comes to all that entertainment and they're not focusing on their uh, abilities and skills that they're trying to hone in on Th the whole time all these people are just looking up to other people and they're watching other people's lives and on Instagram eh, especially and I, th I feel like everybody should get off of Instagram personally mm. and I I did just that because you get up on there firstly the reels and all that shit which we talked about the second thing is you constantly comparing yourself with someone else's life that you might not even know them mm -hmm. and when you're talking about celebrities celebrities they don't have distractions why because they're successful and they did all those things and they got mm. to where they got to and they are pretty much just you know they're the leaders everyone else watching are the followers and they're just like hurting the cr you know the crowd the herd over and they're just they're, they're like puppets all these people but the people who are actually out there like they're like, oh man, you you look at Elon Musk. A lot of people look, like to to label him as someone who is, uh, you know, very successful. Has all these ideas that you know you you put onto paper, and actually things are happening with everything that he's interested in. And people would be like, oh man, I would love to, you know, be in his position, or you know, that's really inspiring. But they don't realize what it takes to play that position, right? Like Elon mm -hmm. Musk, you know, if you if you t throwing it into sports terms, you know, he might be playing a left field, but nobody knows what it takes to play left field. They just see the result, but they don't see all that time period uh, to where to how to get to that end goal and uh, you know it's it's taken many many years and he's just been very focused on himself to improve and get to those goals that he actually wanted to and it's a lot of devoted time and, and discipline that you need for that and not everyone's going to be an Elon Musk there's only one but um, 
yeah the the comparing yourself to is for me the biggest reason why I think Instagram is so bad for for people because it unmotivates you it allows you to compare yourself to others and then uh, and it could be people you know or people you don't even know but my thing is this because I used Instagram for me I used to be on and I you know it, it would be the platform where I had a lot of I guess um, friends from school or um, mm-hmm. in yeah, you know personal friendships and all that everybody like every it was yeah. just Instagram for me mm-hmm. and you know I kept watching all these you know pictures them going this them uh, them maybe uh, succeeding in this them doing that them you know posting these perfect pictures and I'm thinking to myself like you know why am I here watching someone else's life rather than me not doing my own and it make it's like if you really need to be on Instagram to to get information from some of your friends and that tells me two things they're not your friends <laughs> because they would either have invited you to said party or you know, if someone's getting married, having a kid, you know, big, big goals, getting a job, going somewhere, vacation. They either have told you about it in your personal private messages or in person or they talk to you in the, on the phone. They actually told you what's going on in their life or you got an invitation to actually go there. If you didn't get either, they're not thinking about you. So there's no reason that someone has to be, you know, constantly, you know, looking at, at you know, either your friends, uh, quotation mark, friends, and mm-hmm. all these celebrities, too. Like, there's no reason you need to be invested in their people's lives. Um, and to me, I said, you know what? Yeah, I don't really need to be on there. And I deleted it. I don't remember when. Um, I've been off definitely over a year, probably close to a year, and I didn't just delete that, I delete, well, I never had TikTok, deleted Snapchat, um, which, same thing, I had a lot of people on Snapchat, deleted Snapchat, um, and I've zoned in on a few, only a few social medias, because, what do you uh, have? Uh, I just have Twitter as, I guess, social media, and obviously I watch a lot of YouTube. YouTube is like my TV. <laughs> yeah, and, same thing. And Discord. There you go. And that's really it. I mean, Discord is good because, and Twitter, well, Twitter's good because, you know what, You're there's not many pictures and videos. It's more of, like, text and discussion. So mm-hmm. that's why I like it better because it doesn't. You're not really comparing yourself, you know. It's just more discussion. I also get a lot of news off of Twitter, whether it be um, uh, sports trades, um, you know, um, sports news, business news, real, you know, real yeah. world events, stuff like that. I I can never delete Twitter just because of that. Like yeah. whenever there's some big event that's happening or some rumor or something going on, I immediately go to Twitter and I go to the trending section and that tells me everything I need to know. So I, I agree with Twitter. Like I don't think it's bad because it no. keeps you up to date with everything and it doesn't do it in a way to where you're comparing yourself with other people. And it's not – I've noticed it's not very addictive either No, because I feel like you become – addicted not necessarily to words but more to visual things like pictures and videos you know because when you're it's just like reading a book you know like the reason why like your teachers always told you to you know do some reading do some reading you know 30 minutes a day is because it's good for you and that's kind of what twitter is is that twitter is basically just reading it's discussion 
I, I, I think it's very interesting actually to think about that in comparison to Instagram, because I want to go back to what you said on how like, you know, all of like, because for me, a lot of people that I know from either high school or I just don't physically see anymore, that's my only way of reaching them is through there. So that's why it's been really hard for me to let go of Instagram, even though I wanted to do it for a while. Well, I got and a great alternative. So what's the alternative? You say that's the only way of reaching them. For, for a lot of people, yeah. Okay. So for those who you still want to reach out to, tell them. Uh, well, firstly, reach out to them. Give them a message. And say that, you know, I've been you know, thinking about, you know, getting off of social media a little bit, Instagram, but I still want to keep in touch with you. And then just exchange uh, phone numbers. This way you can still text them and communicate with them, but you don't need to be uh, on the platform, which has so much other negative negativity content. I don't know if there's an option to, but if there's a way that you can only pick certain accounts to look at, this way you could be only uh, viewing certain, you know, people, but, you know, a lot of other stuff is just thrown in there, garbage, but I honestly, I, I really recommend it, and I would at least, would love for you to try it for at least a small period of time, because you'll start to notice it too. What, an like another habit I had which I've been trying to break is just the constant picking your phone up mm. and right? that was me with Instagram I would go on YouTube shorts I'd be on shorts for like however long then I'd go to um, Snapchat I'd go through whatever they have I don't even know what they're called then I would go to Instagram and do the reels then I go back to YouTube Shorts, mm -hmm. but the thing uh, is, it's just that carousel, like it's just the nonstop carousel of. It's all the same content, but on different social media platforms. So when I started realizing that, I said, you know what? There's no reason to have multiple social media platforms. Now, as like a business, <laughs> you know, you need to have like TCR, for example. TCR has multiple social medias because. Not everybody has every single social media. Some people just stick to one. And <clears throat> if you're a business and you, or individual um, uh, influencer or whatever you want to call yourself, if you keep posting on one platform and only that one platform, you'll never reach certain people because they're just not on the platform and they'll never be. So... Um, as a business side of you know, that standpoint, you have to be on every social media. Personally, you just need to be on one because if you have, let's say, Twitter, you can follow every like main account. You know, if you want to follow uh, Formula One, NASCAR, for example, they have accounts on every platform. They post the same thing on every platform. So when you go to Instagram versus YouTube or Snapchat to Twitter, you know, Facebook. Everything is the same content. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that I know that do that exact same thing to where they have s several apps like Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And they go and they post the same picture with the same caption. Like say, you know, they were out in Chicago. They went to Chicago for the day. They're going to post the same picture with the same exact caption. And they'll copy and paste that so that they post it on different apps for people to see and that that's actually really eye-opening it's like why why are you doing that necessarily like i'm not saying they're they're looking for attention but like do you need to post the same exact stuff with the same exact words on every single app yeah it just seems unnecessary yeah and most of those people are just like individual people just posting to try to to get more followers and stuff but it's not even like they have mm -hmm. a company or a product they're selling a business uh so if you're just like an average joe then there's no reason to be posting on all these different platforms and it's it's just so much time and effort to like to do all that pick one platform stick to it but i really suggest not like Definitely, I think Twitter's the 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 healthiest form of it, and most informative as well, due to 
all the information and uh, stuff you can get from a lot of different reporters or whoever you follow different things articles twitter is is good almost or kind of it could even be like a reddit too some people are on reddit reddit mm, i like reddit i like reddit a lot i think reddit is actually okay yeah because like there's a lot of there's a lot of like videos on there and pictures but it's not from the perspective of like a personal like it's not like you know you're trying to you know and stand out it's just discussion you know it's like twitter but with more pictures and, and videos i feel like i feel like they're more more relevant on there compared to twitter but it, they're similar apps i've noticed twitter and uh reddit they're pretty similar yeah yeah um yeah but so for me the i i i've been noticing i pick my phone up a lot not not as often as others like I'll, I'll i think there's like um like today i was actually pretty active today but uh i think it shows there's a stat that shows pickups so today pickups yeah yeah so if you go on your phone if you have apple hopefully you do because yes. yes if you don't the conversation's done good night <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like Apple's great. I don't know why people shit on Apple, but anyways. Um, if you go, uh, swipe. Uh, I guess swipe right. So, uh, on the you know your main screen when you open up. Just like the home screen with all the apps. Yeah, and then you you know swipe okay. to the right. So the right. Yep. Then that then it'll show kind of like hours or something a bar graph or whatever. You click the bar graph, and it'll bring you to a whole nother screen. Okay, yeah, I got you. you so if you swipe to the left, not the right. Yeah, I mean, not to the well, left of the home page. No, I get where you. Yeah, well, yeah. I, no. I have it. I have it pulled up. Cool. So if you go all the way down, it shows pickups, and it sh actually tells you how many times you picked your phone up. So wow. today, I I really want to hear your number first. Before oh no! I think mine. you need to. I I no. I want to hear yours. I never even knew about. This. Oh, I don't know. This, How many is yours? This thing is. This thing is. I oh shit! Know. I I'm, I feel I'm, bad for you. I hope your watch your number is going to be two, <laughs> and I'm going to be. <laughs> what? No, no. I, all right. So mine could be. Mine could be a little high today, but definitely not too much because I did go to the gym. And usually I'll put my phone down at every machine I go to and then pick it up. So there could be a couple pickups there because I, you know, wow. due to that. But today I have 40 total pickups. Jesus Christ. Is that good? For you? Um, I never, be freeze, like these phones are... Are unbelievable! I never even knew this was a thing. Oh God, Camden, I'm 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 worried for you. I want to hear this number. I'm I'm kind of embarrassed. Oh no, so, Camden. Okay, before I, before I tell now, you well, let me tell you this. Before, if up? your number, I'll say it. No, I don't want to hear it yet. I just want to guess. Okay. okay. <clears throat> if your number of total pickups is over a hundred, no, I want no, 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 you. No, 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 no. It's not. What if it was? What if it was? I would say that you most certainly I really want you to delete Instagram for uh, those 21 days that we were talking about to actually implement some sort of change and take that extra time because and actually put it towards something else and we're because I wanna we were talking about this you said you wanted to to, to create change and I think that is really it but I want to hear this number but I really want to see change because I, I yeah like I've seen it for me and you know like I said I think I said it uh, the other day we were talking all these people are so glued in to the now and their phones and all this nonsense distractions if if you are able to get ahead of these other people I mean you're just gonna whew, you're gonna go straight to the front of the line to get on the ride uh, just keep yeah. that in mind. But I want to hear this number, Camden. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say it. But are you I agreeing wanna... if it is over 100, you would do that? Yes. Okay. I, 
before I say the number, I just want to point out actually. So I I saw all the apps to where it says first used after pickup. Instagram actually is not the top app for. Oh, where's which, that? Where do you see that? Facebook. Oh, right below. So it. If you go right below <laughs> it, the app for this for today. For today, the first app is Facebook. I've picked up my phone to go on the Facebook more than I have Instagram, but those two blow every other app out of the water. Facebook so and what? Instagram? Thing. In Instagram. They blow every other app out of the water. They, <coughs> they honestly, they come close. Well, they're about probably a third of all of my pickups. Today. Now, I use my Jeez. iPad too, so I don't know if they have pickups there, but I don't see anything. Okay. All right. But... So, for today, oh, total gosh. pickups 78. Okay. Not too bad actually. That, that, that is my most for the week. Uh that's my most this past week. Yeah, um, that's not actually too too bad. Yeah, um, it's okay. My yeah, my 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 number one used app after picking it up is Safari. Only nine times today. Um, I was I'm a very indecisive person when it comes to buying things, and I was at the store today. And I wanted to buy shirts, <laughs> but I didn't, I was like, I was researching different sh shirts and different prices and stuff while I was in the store on Safari. And then my second is a title, so for music, so at the gym, mm -hmm. only six times picked it up for that, but yeah. Not 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 too bad, not too bad. Um Yeah, no, not too bad. Man, I mean I'm looking so I'm going through and you can scroll back through the weeks. Like if you go to pickups, you swipe left and you're going back through the weeks. I'm trying to find one that absolutely blows all of the other days out of the water and I just found one actually I have no idea how this is possible I, I don't even remember what what the reason for this is on December 27th oh God. I picked up my phone 128 times <laughs> yeah. and interestingly enough though it wasn't Facebook or Instagram that was blowing everything out of the water it was Apple Music I picked it up Apple Music 43 times in a single day. I I must have been like adding a bunch of songs to my playlist maybe or like maybe I was working out and I was constantly changing like I don't know because that's that's almost 3 weeks ago now. So I don't I don't remember but I mean 128 times in a day like that's insane. I don't care yeah. what app I'm using. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, we live in a, an age now where social media and all all these devices are part of us, so it's kind of impossible to not use any of it, um, but definitely limiting it. Um, so I think, because I when I'm home, I use my iPad for YouTube because I like it's a bigger screen, and my phone. I I'm usually never on my phone. I'm on my phone for like Twitter which is very little amount um, cuz like you said it's not as addictive as another uh, thing so i just hop on there boop, 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 see what's trending all right nothing boom turn it off probably never go back on it for the day um but um my phone is usually just for 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 my music uh when i go to the gym i'll i'll use that and then when i'm home i'm on my ipad and Discord, YouTube, and that's really it. I mean, I don't have many apps that I use. I only circle between about five, six. Mm -hmm. So not not too not too too bad. But yeah, that's an that's something that because I know my friend, and I don't know how. 
Like it's really bad. He it tells it shows the total watch time or total um, total hours on on your device, and mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, you know, mine like today. That's another. Did, did what? What was yours on your phone today? Your your total hours on your phone. Total hours today. Let's go check this out. Total hours <clears throat> today, eight hours. Oh yeah. So on my phone today, I had four hours, but an hour of it was using music. So technically, I'm not on my phone, but. Yeah, I think um, those numbers are kind of skewed because, like, music's okay, especially if you have it, like, in the background. You're not even on there. Like, right, right. Scrolling through stuff. Um, but my friend was upwards. His He was averaging around 15 hours. Holy shit. How? Did he... Yeah. Was that because he left his phone? Did he go to sleep and he left his phone on? No, averaging, like, every day, like, 15 to 18 hours. So does he does he leave his phone on when he goes to sleep, or is he um, on it? No, he could, day? but he's could... he he's like he's he's really on it. I mean, yeah, and I and I you know, man, twelve fifteen. I and mean, when you get to the double That's... digits, you know, it, it it's a, uh, you know, it's up there. You know, <laughs> it's an addiction. I think at that point, if you're getting oh, the double know. digits, it's an addiction. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to count me, my all the time I'm on my phone, my iPad, or my computer, I mean, it may be a, a decent amount, but like like I said, you might be doing things on these devices to improve those uh, skills or things you've been wanting to, to work towards. So, you know, it's not like just because you have a lot of time means, you know, it's bad. You could be working and you work in Excel and working on these things and you know, well, you kind of have to be on your devices for that. But it's just something to keep an eye on because I know some people are addicted to just picking their phone up. And then they're also, I remember I was in like just out, I don't know where I was, a restaurant or something and like, I think it was at school. Yeah, it was at school. Went into the the classroom, and I'm sitting down. I'm I'm sitting more towards the back, so I get to see, you know, pretty much all the all the people. And I'm looking, not one person is not on their phone. Every single person is on their phone. Quiet. It was quiet because the the teacher didn't come in, the professor didn't come in yet. So everybody's on their phone, silent as a a mouse so quiet in there everybody's on their phone and their neck is all the way scrunched over everybody's leaning forward and i'm like wow and i was literally the only one just chilling like with not on my phone because i don't know like it, sometimes when i'm on my phone in, in public a lot like if i'm on it like it just messes my eyes up a little bit, you know. Like um, mm-hmm. it gets dark, like very like bright and dark, and like I, it just it messes me up to like like I'm not good, <laughs> like physically. Like my eyes are getting all blurry and stuff. So usually I try not to be on my phone so much. But man, there's been times. Oh man, <laughs> there was, there was a multiple, and I mean multiple times. I would be just walk, going out for a walk or whatever, or a run or whatever. But mainly when I was walking, I'd be going. I'd just be walking down the sidewalk. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm not in like a city city, so there's not many many people walking down the sidewalk. Um, I'm just walking down the sidewalk, and there's this, every single instance. It was always a girl, not which is a really I don't know why. They shouldn't be doing it, but they sh- girls shouldn't be on their phone out in public, glued to their phone. Firstly, that definitely should not be, uh, because they are just not girls? everyone. Girls, more specifically, yes. Why? Um, because it's 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 kind of a safety risk for especially for them. Um, if oh. you're if you're if you're huh 
going, walking down the sidewalk, and you're just glued to your phone. And, and this is what I'm going to say in a minute. We'll tell you exactly why. It's happened three times. Three different girls just walking around my neighborhood, around wherever. They were glued to their phone, headphones in, music blasting probably, um, head down, glued to the screen, walking straight. It's only your peripheral vision, really, looking to where you're walking. You know, you could pretty much, if you're on the sidewalk, you really just walk wherever. And um, we would be crossing paths, so like, or every instance, three times that I know of, quite recently actually, I think that's the previous summer, we'd be walking down, and I'm not on my phone, I have my headphones in, going for a walk or whatever, not on my phone, but just out, you know, he head up, looking to see what's going on, I would walk past them all three times, they all are jumped and scared, and some actually screamed. Not, you know, crazy loud, but, like, kind of <laughs> shit themselves a little bit because someone else walked past them. Not even kidding. Like, and this is just around, like, this is not... That's in your neighborhood. Yeah, this is in, like, Times Square, Well, which, I mean, or, you know, a lot of shit can happen there. But, like, when you're out... You sh shouldn't be, but it's uh, definitely s uh, safety for sure. Like you shouldn't be on your phone or even headphones in out. And I mean, I guess you. Re it, it depends where you live, obviously, but in the area and all that. But you know, that's like number one rule. Like you don't go out with your headphones in and in certain areas where you can't hear your surroundings and you're certainly not on your phone walking glued to it so where you don't even know who's behind you like yeah. there'd be sometimes i'd have my headphones in going for a walk or a run and i look behind me you never know like i'm not glued to my phone like you like you'd be surprised some crazy shit happens and uh, you got to be around aware of your surroundings but not even gonna lie three times and i was just so surprised like do, like that they're just so glued to their phone and that could you know and it has gotten either people killed hurt or you know yeah well so i watched this guy on youtube and what he does it's actually pretty cool he goes around to these <sighs> cities and he asks people what song they're listening to Have oh I, I've, yeah I've, I've seen it obviously but yes. but the thing is though with those videos is that he's able to go up to all these people and ask that because everybody's got their headphones in or they've got their AirPods in. They always are, everyone's in their own little world on their phone listening to whatever, you know? So I just, I think that's interesting that like so many people are doing that <coughs> nowadays. And I don't think listening to music is necessarily a bad thing, especially if you're like, you know, walking from place to place and you need to get somewhere without, like, distractions or whatever. But like you said, it's a safety issue, especially if you're, like, really just tucking yourself into your own little world. No, you're a target. That's you, what you, you are. absolutely are. When you, you have absolutely. your phone out and you're looking at it down the sidewalk and you have your headphones in, you're a target for anyone to rob you or, or hurt you or, you know, do even more things to you. It, you really are like you could have your headphones in and music on if you really know the area and you know where you're going but if you've never been to a certain area before you know you shouldn't have your headphones in if you know it's not like depending if you know the area or not you know could dictate what you do in certain areas but um you know not having your music blasting either you know is is also you know, not too good. Or, you know, if you're walking down, you, you got to hear the cars as well. Make sure you get don't get run over. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you got to, you got to, you can't. Got a lot of drunk drivers out there. Yeah. Um, you'll be walking on the sidewalk one day and just somebody, you know, drifts over onto the sidewalk and boom, you're mashed potatoes. Yeah. So there was. <laughs> Could happen. I mean, I'm joking, but literally, like, you have oh, to be it's, alert. It, like, I know. It, it does happen. And it it does happen, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it does. Um, there was two more things I wanted to to tell you, and then then I'll send you the video. 
I know. I, I've been keeping it off. I want to send it to you, and I want you to listen to it. And I think this was a very productive conversation. Mm-hmm. For sure. I um. So I was saying about all these the 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 purpose. I was thinking the other literally the other day. Like, within the last few days, I was thinking, and I don't know if anybody has said this quote or not. If they have, you know I'm already going to mess it up. That's what Sea Freeze does if you listen to my commentaries. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always I always mess up the quotes. I, I, uh, <laughs> I paraphrase it. I make it my own. Um, so I don't know who said it. Maybe I said it. Maybe I was the first one to say it. This is the quote that I was thinking of. I was saying, and let me make sure I don't get it wrong. I was saying that a life without purpose is a meaningless life. And a meaningless life is a life worthless to live. Whoa. Wow. It's deep. Can't yeah. Be. It's deep. <laughs> so, and I think that sums up why a lot of people have maybe depression or other mental um, disorders, and anxiety, and other things. And I think that could be a reason why people put things off and like to feel comfortable. And that is, unfortunately, a big reason of why we there's a, a big um, high numbers in suicide. Is also because people lack purpose. Mm-hmm. And it is so true. Because there, there, have been, there have been maybe two times in my life where I've been like, you know what, what's next? And I really have to, and, and it's fine to, to go in those situations because like, um, to where I'm like, man, what is my purpose? What am I doing? What is my, what's my next, right? What am I doing next? Because I, I feel like I always have to be doing something. <laughs> Got to be mm-hmm. doing, working towards something. I don't know. That's just who I am. Yeah. I can't not, not do nothing. So it been like maybe two times where I had to reconsider like what is important, values, what do I want to work on, what's my goals, all yada, yada, yada. But um, yeah, a life without any purpose is a mean uh what was what did I say what did I, what did I say <laughs> it sounded good the a first life, time a life without yeah let me hear you say it it'll a, sound good go ahead meaningless life and a meaningless life is worthless to live yeah. something along those lines i get Absolutely. the general idea of it and it makes yeah a lot of sense actually <clears throat> it's true you need purpose in your life you need you need a, that ambition to go out and do certain things and you know it doesn't yeah. it can be short term long term but you know you need to work towards something um, and and the second thing I wanted to, 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 to say is I think when you wrap your head around it when you really really think about it The most selfish thing. Do you know what? Here, I'm going to ask you. Do you know what the most selfish thing a human being can do in their entire life? What is the most selfish thing that one Hmm. person can do? And we all do it. We all do it. Selfish. I mean... I'm thinking of stuff, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like you're pro- you're gonna have to tell me because I don't. Okay. No, like, I don't expect I'm you to know it. No. But maybe maybe you were on the right track. I think the most selfish thing any individual human being can do in this world that we all do is simply living your own life yeah that's kind of kind of what i was thinking like i was thinking like 
putting your own interests before anything else. Yes. You know, well, that and too. like, I, and I, it is I believe so that. true. It's I, so I, true. I believe that. Um, I think it can be misinterpreted though, because like, if you're saying that, I think for some people, they, they think, you know, Oh, should I, you know, because like, it's important to have goals for yourself and it's important to have a purpose. So are you saying like, your purpose in life shouldn't always be about you. It should be about your goals, but it, I don't know. Maybe no, you could I'm explain saying, it. I'm saying it. The I get opposite what you're way. saying, but I'm trying to I'm actually it. saying that, <clears throat> well, it could go both ways. It could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. I think life in moderation is, I think some way that I kind of live it. Cause like, you know, we were saying earlier, like, uh, you know, some people go out and party a lot. And whereas mm -hmm. if you're doing it all the time, it's probably not the best thing. Yeah. But going and doing that here and there is perfectly fine. It's There's really no problem with that. So I think for me, the biggest thing, I guess it could be a good or bad thing. But at the end of the day, you're the only person living your life. And mm -hmm. you were the only person putting your head on the pillow at night. Period. No one can do that for you. People can can feed you. Unfortunately, some people are, you know, in, in, in certain situations where they can't even... Um, feed themselves, uh, yeah. drinking, um, brushing their teeth, that sort of thing. But no one else can put their your own head on the pillow at night and sleep. You're the only one who can sleep. Think your, No one else can think for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can only think. So those things like are you, are you and you only. And you have the ability to write your own story to the best of your ability meaning you can't write everything but you can write it to the best of your ability the rest some things could be out of your control but you're the main character in your own story and this is something I actually this was a quote I don't remember where I found it heard it from so I don't even I don't even know I don't know I'm not good with that sort of thing um, but they, they said that, uh, and actually it was a kind of a wake-up call too in the last few years. Um, you're the only main character in your story, and every other person's life or story, you're only a, I guess, secondary or side mission. Hell, you could even be an extra. Or you might not even be in the story. <laughs> and there's no other main character in other stories. Now, there's some people closer into that circle of other people's lives that could be... Like, like if you look, if you write your own story, your own life, right? You make it, you have a main mission. In that main mission, you meet a couple individuals that might be really important to you in your life. But the main character is you. You're playing that game. You're playing your life. Th then you have a whole bunch of your side missions. Some people that maybe have come and gone for very short periods in your life. Whether it be, you know, uh, your sixth grade, you know, math teacher, your bus driver, you know, the person you went every day to the deli or uh, to the to the restaurant and, and they would give you the food or whatever uh, the post office if you went every day that that one person could be side mission right like those people you know you talk to every now and then but you know they might have quit or you know you moved up a grade and a different bus driver you'll never see him again unfortunately for most most times um, they're your side mission. Then you have a lot of other people who are just extras that you come across for a split second. You know, something happened on the side 
uh, someone's, uh, you know, tire went down, you helped them do the car, you know, get a new tire on, boop, boop, boop. Very, they're an extra. They, you, you met them once, you'll never see them again. And then there's people who aren't even in the story, those are people you never met, and you'll never meet. In your, in your story. Wow. You'll never meet them. So wow. if you think about it like that, you kind of get a sense of what's important to you, and, you know, you wow. can kind of go from there. That's deep, really deep interesting. Deep shit. But yeah. I know. I've never thought of it that way because I think it's really easy, especially for me at times. And I'm not saying, you know, I do this all the time, but it's easy in some circumstances if you're out in public, you know, say like something embarrassing happens. Say like, you know, you're you're shopping, you know, you're doing the groceries or whatever, and you, you drop something or something breaks or whatever. Like it's easy to be embarrassed because you have all these people around you looking at you and, you know, maybe they're judging you, but like the chances of somebody in that grocery store actually knowing you is slim to none. Yeah. And even then, like if, if there's a person in there that knows you, you can laugh about it the next day when you see them the next day. Like all those other extra people, like you said, you're never going to come across them again. And the thing is too, those extra people are going to forget about it throughout time. So it's not the type of thing to where you have to think, Oh, that person, you know, I know I don't know them, but they're going to think about that guy that made a fool out of themselves, you know, like, no, they're going to forget about that. Like people, people move on, you know, like, that's, oh, absolutely. That's really interesting. You just have about. to think, if and, and for those situations when you go out in public and you might be embarrassed or might, uh, like, you know, I, obviously we all feel that to an extent. But what helps me the most is just realize that all those other people are just blobs running around the earth aimlessly. Mm -hmm. They're just blobs. We're just moving people. That's it. We're all we're all people. We're all, we're all blobs. We're we're that's... we're all blobs. That's yes. what I call it. We're just <laughs> we're just mush running around the you know aimlessly uh, you know getting our emo you know many many people today getting their emotions hurt. We're, we're all we're all somebody's creation. Yeah, something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I actually I love awkwardness and um, I don't know. I I feel like. I I hate it. it yeah. For me, like, I, <laughs> I love I awkwardness. It. Like, I don't know. It's like, just, it's... Not, it, not, I'm not saying I despise awkward people. I'm just saying, like, scenarios to where, like... Because I, I I have moments where I can be awkward. Like, I'll put it like that. Like, I definitely have moments where I can be awkward because I am a little introverted. So it's, it's easy for me to be in those situations. And I yeah, just... Too. I don't I don't like that because, you know, it's just... It's kind of, like emotionally draining you know especially like yeah, especially is, if yeah. you've had those experiences before it'd be one thing like if it happens you know for the first time or whatever but like if you've had those awkward experiences it's very easy to kind of like shy yourself away from certain things because you're scared of getting yourself into awkward scenarios again because you know what that feels like and it kind of sucks <laughs> at times yeah. Yeah, it depends. It it really does. Usually I'll I I'll be more of the person of like I'll just kind of kind of laugh it off, right? Rather just mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I kind you, you know what? I kind of embrace my own weirdness. I I like to be weird. I don't know. How how like is there <laughs> certain like cuz we're talking about like you're out in, in public, like Mhm. Mm is there like examples to where like you're not afraid like if like something awkward happens or like you know there was some weird conversation you know the other person was being awkward or whatever like are you able to like like you said be weird not be weird but kind of accept those weird moments without feeling like oh that was terrible you know if that makes sense yeah um I would say I think the biggest thing is just for me I don't know I just there's like two there's like I never like I feel like a lot of people are like this but I feel like a lot of people and me included don't like to go to certain 
places they've never been to and they don't know where things are or like let's say you're going to mm. somewhere and you don't <laughs> like like let's say you're picking up food let's say you ordered something over the phone or app or whatever at a new place you've never gone to before and you don't know where to pick it up like usually like you go to who where, where do you go how do you do it do what are they going to ask you know blah all these things so like that could be like something or and you know it's funny like my friend like we i would order on the app to, to uh at a food place and they would make it and i would go in and <clears throat> just pick it up and my friend never um did it before so um he, he he was going to get it on his uh, his uh, his break at work, and he said I was going right before him. So he said he said can and he was really nervous. Like he was like a little nervous. He you know kind of like I didn't get it. Know. It's not no like that's so, totally normal. <laughs> so he said uh, he said can you can you videotape yourself going in so I know exactly where the the place is to pick up the food, and me being a good friend. I said, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll record myself going in to the restaurant and showing you exactly where everything is. Then I came back with my food, showed him the video, and he's like, all right, cool. And then I, I was like, then he was able to, to, to go and do that. Um, it's like those situations. I feel like everybody's weirded out, but I kind of like embrace that like if you're going into an area you've never gone to you just kind of take your time and you know it's okay to be somewhere to, for the first time but like if you ever like oh you know it's worse to like you go to like a new rest like uh maybe um food food place deli sandwich shop whatever and you go in but you don't know what they have on the menu so now you're standing there and you're thinking man what do i want and then you're like oh where, where, where do i go to do where do I order? Where do I pay? So I'm just kind of like going in there aimlessly, not knowing where to go. So I kind of like try to make sure I get all that information as much as I can. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. And another thing, two things actually. I hate going to like some place and I have to like order food or order or, or ask for help for something that I've never like I don't know how to like so then like I'm walking to the place and I'm like in my head phrasing it out and oh practicing what I'm saying before yep. I actually say it and then when I get there I forget what I'm saying <laughs> so that's like the weird awkward moments because oh, these other yeah. people will be there just listening to me just not being able to put a sentence together and <laughs> it's hard <laughs> You know, um, that makes me yeah. feel a lot better about myself, though. And I think it shows, like, that <laughs> we're all kind of similar and we shouldn't, you know, take ourselves too seriously in those moments. Because, like, no, there's definitely been times where I've done that. And there's even been times where, like, you know, like, I want to go up and, like, talk to a girl, you know. Like, more times than not, like, I I tend to prepare myself, you know. And that's not how you should do it because like right now i'm just talking right and this is a great conversation it's a natural conversation and if you just have that mentality not just with that but like if you're going out to a store you know and you need to get something just think all right i need to get from point a to point b say that you're you know at point a which is the front door and you need to get to point b which is the service desk or whatever just focus on that walk from point A to point B. And as soon as you get to point B, just talk. Because you're going to be there. You're going to be there with the service people. So then just be like, hey, this is what's going on. But, yeah, I, that really yeah. is relatable. And it makes me feel better that, you know, like, we're all kind of... I feel like everybody has those moments. Like, as much as, like, there's introverted people and extroverted people, I think everybody at least oh i know ex i know moments. plenty of extroverted people that are in those same situations it's it, it like just those things i mentioned and you know even introverted people 
do actually sometimes better you know it really just depends but the the one thing the and then the, the the last thing that I really do get nervous about in situations is I always I don't know I get nervous and anxious every time I go for my haircut really I I don't I just don't like going to the barber shop even though I go and get I go to the same person I schedule it on the app that that they use and everything's set but for some reason I always get a nervous like really nervous for some reason <laughs> going every single time and I don't know I, I just feel like like walking in and there's like all these like people and then you don't know if you have to wait or not and yeah <laughs> and then you got to tell him he kind of knows he does the same thing i'm like he does as usual and like yeah all right but then like sometimes like my barber will will start talking a little bit to me and i'm like firstly i can't even hear you because all these hair dryers going all over the place so i don't even know what you said <laughs> <laughs> and now you're expecting me to respond to you and not only that I gotta respond loud enough so that you can hear Oh, and yeah. there's people s that I don't even know like right next to me and like I feel like I'm yelling because then they got the music going which the music is great music if you go to barbershops like good barbershops they got you know they don't give a shit what's going on like they matter mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is kind of funny in that regard but i don't know i don't like talking in my haircut i usually just like to sit and like it's more relaxing type you know say hey how are you yeah. blah, blah blah but like i like to be relaxed and not talk yeah well i think for me like i can relate in the sense of like appointments not just haircuts but like there's been a lot of times not, I don't think about this a lot, but there's been moments where it's like, man, I've got four months until my dentist appointment. Oh, man, it's coming up soon. Oh, the appointments I do good in, actually. Oh, for okay. some reason, I, actually, I, I had to go uh, the other day for something, and <clears throat> it's, um, I go in, oh, I know my first line. I'm like, your first line is, hi, I'm here for a six o'clock appointment. Yeah, then, that's easy. Then they're like, oh, the name, tell them the name. They give you paperwork, and I don't fill much of it out. <laughs> I I kind of do the excuse of I start filling it out, and then I I fill it out really slowly for some. I can't focus mm. and fill it out. There was one time, like like earlier this week when I had to go, I had to fill out all this stuff out. I sat down in the waiting room, I had to use the bathroom, sat down again, they called my name in, I went in there, and I literally only had my name on a piece of paper. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, there wasn't much time in the waiting room, only a couple minutes, but I only had my name on the piece of paper, not even the date, and then I'm like, not you know. Not even the date. <laughs> yeah, I, I went through the whole thing, and then I went back to the front desk, I said, yeah, I don't know how much I filled out, but this is what I got, and they're like, oh, alright, you're fine. I barely filled anything out they mm -hmm. ask you all the same stuff when you go in there so there's no reason to double it up so paperwork i don't even do but <laughs> yeah yeah but the thing with the haircut though going back to that your experience is a little bit different than mine because the place i go to isn't a barber shop it's just a general hairdresser okay the difference between you and i as well is that you live in a more populated area I live in a town with 2,000 people and in a state with 600,000 people. So the hairdresser I go to, there's literally two chairs, right? And it, they're on – there's one on one side of, like, this wall mirror thing, and there's one on the other. It's literally just one room. It's a small hairdresser because I live in Vermont. I live in a very small town in Vermont. And so literally – I would say 99% of the haircuts I get, it's just me and the, the hairdresser, you know, the, the lady that runs the place. And I almost feel like if I was getting my haircut and I had these people getting their haircut next to me, that's weird because I've always gotten a haircut 
with this one lady to where I can talk about stuff with and I won't feel like self-conscious. You you get what I'm saying? Because oh, like if you're yeah. <laughs> going to like a dentist appointment, you get to you get to talk a lot with, you know, the the dentist because it's just you in that room with the dentist. Same thing with like a physical. If you're getting a physical, you're just in that one room. That's all I've ever known with any appointment, whether it's a haircut, a, a doctor's appointment. But with you, like, I don't know, do you go to like a supercuts or like no, where, like a local, where you go? Like a local... Uh, oh, oh, barbershop, that's right. Barbershop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but is it... So it's a pretty <coughs> big barbershop, though, with a lot of... I can't... Uh, I, I almost feel like... Maybe 14, 16 chairs? Wow. I almost feel like... I would like to see you live in my town for a month. I, I would be very curious, and I'll do the opposite. I'll go and I'll... I think I would be... I would, I would be like it, though. I wouldn't like it. Firstly, it'd be way too slow for me. Secondly, I'd probably know everybody in the town, and I don't want to go to the grocery store or, um, you know, food <laughs> and have to say hi to everybody because I know everybody. Like... Well... That's that. Be, that to me would be annoying. Like, uh, like I could go out and do things and not have to know anybody and just kind of, you know, put put the hoodie up yeah. and you know, you just go to business, do what you got to do. Yeah, you would be surprised with like. So if you go into a restaurant, yeah, you're gonna know people there. Even if you're going into a subway, like chances are you're gonna see somebody that you know there. When it comes to grocery stores, though, you don't see too many people you know there's a lot of times where you'll maybe see one person that you know in there but the grocery <coughs> stores like there's so there's a market uh a few minutes from where i live it's a small market so yeah a lot of times you'll see people that you know but there's a lot of grocery stores around here to where you go in and it's not often that you see somebody that you know maybe like the cashier or somebody that yeah you know works there but a lot of the time, you really don't see too many people that you know. Also, too, like I do a lot of – I live on the border of New Hampshire. And as soon as you go into New Hampshire, there's a lot more, you know, commotion there. Like there's 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 bigger towns, and so that's where I do a lot of my shopping. But there's, there's a lot of stuff to where you don't typically see, you know, the usual people in your town. Yeah. If you're living in a small town. Yeah. No, I just – yeah, no, I, I, I like the fast pace, you know. It's uh, mm, mm, I just maybe it's because I've literally I've lived here since I was four. Maybe I don't know any other way, but I feel like it would it would make me anxious if everything was like fast pace, fast pace. Oh, yeah. Let's oh, go, absolutely. you know, do your shit and go. <laughs> I feel like I would I would freak out a little bit and I'd be like, oh, what do I what do I do? You know, it's it, it is very slow pace compared to like if I'm out of town you know, and we're going somewhere, I have noticed the, the difference in pace. It's like, wow, people are like, like rapid fire. Like, Oh, God, I remember like I went competition. To... Mm. Was it? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't. I thought... No, I was, no, I was just saying like, it's almost like a, a competition to be like, Oh, we, I can get out of there faster than you. You know, <laughs> I can, I can get out of line quicker than you can, sir. You know, let's see how quick you can ring up your items and, and put your debit card in and get out of there. Like, no, it's true because over here, it, um, it's uh, like people don't like to wait. People, people are always rushing, always doing things, always like, oh, I gotta go here, I gotta go here, I gotta you go here. I'm already late. So, like, <laughs> that's 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 what New York is. It's like it's like I, I have all these things to do, a little bit of time, and I'm already running like hours late for my first thing <laughs> so and they just keep going you know i'm already late i'm you know running hours behind it you know, just gotta mm. keep going with it and uh you know you get online and it's like hi how are you boom 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 scan 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 do the car hi you know have a good one <laughs> yeah it, there's no yeah. conversation and then sometimes when i you know go elsewhere i would be online i, I once went to a dunkin donuts and I'm like, oh, all right, get a coffee. How long does it take? Yeah, maybe been maybe third, fourth in line. All right, that'd be like maybe five minutes. I would still get my coffee. 
I'm sitting there. These f people are waiting. Tw I mean, it must have been 20, 30 minutes. The guys in the front, they were having a conversation. How's the grandkids? How's this going on? Oh, my God. In, in line, those two people? In line? Yeah, at the front, yeah. And you uh, know what? You know how many times I've seen that? But they talk so slow. Okay, oh. you want to see how the grandkids are doing, but can you say, how are the grandkids? Oh, the grandkids are good. Okay, good. <laughs> like, like speed it up a little bit. They just talk so slow. They move mm. so slow. They're in no rush. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. I feel like sometimes yeah. they're not even moving. No, I, I totally get what you're talking about. And one of my pet peeve with myself in a way is like when you're talking with somebody on the phone and it's supposed to be just like a short conversation you know or even like if you're getting service done and you end up having small talk with the with the service person and it's time to say bye there's a lot of times where like it's either me or the other person you say goodbye and then they're like oh by the way having you know another a minute or two of conversation but you need to go and do something else or you just want to go to bed or you need you, you get what i'm saying oh absolutely Where, like the conversation just can't end and it's not that it's annoying for me it's more of like i just emotionally it becomes like kind of tiring it's like all right this is getting you know a little much let's just end you know the conversation and just say by you know i don't like dragging things on too long and what you were saying about like those people in line you know at the store or whatever for me that happens everywhere so i i, I don't think you would like that aspect of if you were to move up here to small vermont like you would be like oh my god this is happening everywhere like <laughs> yeah it, it happens a lot yeah it's just it's just different lifestyles <laughs> But, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, definitely. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Well, that was good. I want to send you this. I want you to listen to this. I'll actually... Okay. I'll share my screen. How about that? Sure. Let's listen to it together. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, I don't know if this will sound over, but yeah, it should. Yeah. Are we uh, are we putting this on the TV <laughs> channel? I, I did record it, so... Yeah, uh, I want to see. <laughs> well, I hope you did. I hope you did. <laughs> do you do you see this? Yeah. Yep. All right. Do you hear it? Anything? No. Okay. Hold up. There we go. So it's six minutes. Okay. So cool. I'm gonna mute my mic. I want you to actually listen to it. Yeah. I'll without listen uh, to it. without uh, let me know if it's loud enough. Perfect. Okay. Man. How was that? That was it. Was intense. <laughs> it got in a good way. Like it. You know, it spoke, you know, it felt like the video was almost like grabbing me by the neck and being like, pay attention, you know, look at what's important. Um, I was actually, there was one, one thing in there I, that just, you know, caught me by surprise. When he said uh, 10 years from now, focus on you know what you want to be or what your life you know where you want to be with your life and right before that i noticed there was the uh clip of that guy deleting instagram and, and some of his TikTok, other yeah. apps that are distracting to him and when i saw that i was thinking man i've had instagram for 10 years now and then the guy said you know in 10 years where do you want to be like back to back like i thought that and then the guy said that and i was like that's that can't be a coincidence like it's almost it's almost like i gotta you know make some changes so this was see freeze i'm glad we did this this was 
really I'm, cool. I'm here to help, man. And the, the last thing, because yeah. everything we talked about, and I wasn't sure if we were going to post this, but I think we're going to. We I should. Wanted to I think fit, people would like I, this. I think people would, would benefit a lot from it. A lot of what we talked about tonight summed up in that video alone. I will, I, I've been watching that video every time before I enter the gym. I'll be in my car, and I'll listen to that. And it just puts me in this mindset of, um, you know, what I'm there to do, right? And yeah. uh, and other times I'll I'll submit, but that's a that's a good one. And there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, there's, but to me, that one kind of resonated with me the most. But I wanted to share some goals that I had from last year, 2022. I wanted to share them because. Firstly, I am proud, but I never post, and I think we talked about it, I didn't post what my uh, goals were at the beginning of 2022 because I knew what I wanted to do and I accomplished them. And then hopefully in another year's time, we'll come back another year, we'll do another motivational podcast. And I'll, I could tell everyone what I accomplished in 2023 um, yet again I'm not telling what the goals were at the beginning but showing the results at the end and I hope uh, you or others listening can it's not too late to start your goals for the year and uh, putting them down write them write them down write them down write them down and come back in a year and tell me about it then not at the beginning so for me, 2022, it was a few things I want to do. Not many, many different things. Um, obviously, there's a whole bunch of things, but one of the bigger things was I was coming back from an ankle injury, um, mainly due to running, because uh, that's some one of those, uh, I guess, values or abilities that I've been trying to hone in on in the last few years, and that's one thing that I try to work towards every day in my like five things or so that I really focus on and uh, I had about a year of like uh, you know physical therapy and trying to get back all that strength and so it was a, it was a weird issue it was a weird injury it was what's it's not like a common injury so it was kinda hard to treat um, but regardless I wanted to, to get back to where I was and more um, like a year earlier so I wanted to comfortably run at a nice pace a 5k distance which was my first six months uh, goal I was able to accomplish that in a nice time that I had wanted to accomplish then the, the, the second six months of the year I wanted to get back to where I wanted to be which was right before when I got injured was right around the 10k mark which is around 6 6 point uh, I think it's 6.6 6 point, 6 point, 6 .1 miles 6 point something miles um, was right where I was right before my injury and um, I wanted to get back to that point and then some with the good time mark and I did that uh, in uh, December just before the end of the year and I was able to to finish that, which I'm really proud of. And I have some other running goals and fitness goals, um, but you know, it was very uh, committed, uh, consistent effort all year long to to you know to get from somewhere I was way below with an injury to come back to where I was, and then to go even further um, was really good. And the other one, <clears throat> which I'm actually really proud of. It might be a little embarrassing, but, you know, uh, I don't really think it is. It's just where I was, personally. Um, I could pretty much confidently say, before 2022, I have never read an entire book. Really? In my life. Wow. I can't even like I don't, I wouldn't count any like little children's book or whatever I know all throughout school all throughout middle school high school even elementary you would always get assigned a book to read mm -hmm. 
for oh, like wow. independent reading project yeah. or whatever. 30 minutes a day. Yeah, you'd yeah. lock it down on the paper. You already know you'd be oh, lying. Oh, gosh. Yep. Wow. Um, I've never confidently said I read that book. I've almost finished a lot of books. I would get so far three quarters of the way, 90%, and I would just not finish it. I would just like guess or, or not feel motivated to finish it. A lot of books I've just never really felt interested in until I started reading books about the hobbies and interests that are in my five or so that I've kept telling people, you know, throughout tonight, pick five things you want to focus on. And now I started reading books about things I'm interested in. And I can confidently say I read not one, but I know not a lot. Oh, my God, here. Seafree's read a book. Okay, cool. But to me, that is really difficult to read and sit there and understand what's what's on the paper, comprehending it, but also to, to have your full focus there. I would, I, would, I, was, I would always feel like I would get distracted or I would read an entire page or multiple pages and not know what I just read so I'd have to go back and read it and then sometimes I would read a couple chapters and then I wouldn't read for a couple months so then I forgot everything I just read so it was just like a weird phase but I, I did finish two books last year which I can confidently say was my first and second book I've ever read in my entire life and that could be embarrassing some people read I know it's a big deal Seafree's read but for me <laughs> I am proud of myself that I'm starting to read and I have a book now that I'm reading I'm about oh, a little less than half and it's only January 14th and that's something I've been trying to improve as well as my reading and, and getting just a little bit each day maybe not every day like today I didn't read I might read if I'm tired I'll read tomorrow but I worked on some other things in my abilities today, like those five things I worked on, you know, two so far. So, you know, I'm checking some off every day, improving. So, you know, and I have a, a lot more goals this year than really last year. There's a lot of minor personal stuff as well, but those two were two examples of stuff that I was, you know, starting at the beginning of the year and actually ended at the end of it and that was just last year so go make some goals and go do them that's it for me